Hello, I'm Jorge Gestoso. Welcome to a new program. On today's show, what's going on in Venezuela? Our guest, who came recently back from Venezuela, Alex Main, Director of International Policy with CIPER, the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Alex Main, a warm welcome to the program. Thank you, Jorge. Alex, what is going on in Venezuela? Well, um, a lot is going on in Venezuela. Of course, they've just had a, a blackout uh, recently that lasted several days, which, of course, there has been a history of blackouts uh, for a while now. There's uh, the infrastructure, the electric infrastructure is much deteriorated in the country. However, the, the, the scope and the duration of this blackout uh, was absolutely without precedent, and it makes it look very suspicious indeed, and particularly given the timing just after Juan uh, Guaido, the self-declared interim president of Venezuela, has returned to uh, the country. Let me share with you an, a tweet from Wikileaks. And it says, US-backed regime change consultancy canvas analyzed how to topple Chavez, including by exploiting electricity outages. This would likely have the impact of galvanizing public unrest in a way that no opposition group could ever hope to generate. Would you believe that the U.S. is behind that outage? It, it's certainly possible, um, and particularly given how desperate they seem to be to get rid of uh, the Maduro government. Um, they've tried all sorts of means, uh, except for military intervention at this point. Um, I have very little doubt that if they think that some form of cyber wa warfare would be uh, effective, and particularly, you know, paralyzing uh, the power system and so on in Venezuela, uh, they would resort to those means as well. We're dealing with a group of people in power in the U.S. government uh, that, you know, are known as neoconservatives, uh, that are, uh, have an extremely aggressive vision of uh, U.S. foreign policy, uh, where any means are good, and including if those means uh, lead to um, broad human suffering, uh, they're good if the goals are met, and the goal in this case is regime change. The U.S. announced that he's withdrawing totally its personnel from the embassy in Caracas. What's your reading? Well, it seems that uh, the Venezuelan government um, had uh, actually requested that uh, the U.S. withdraw its diplomatic personnel. Um, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who of course is um, a far-right uh, extremist of the Republican Party, um, announced the withdrawal and said that this would allow um, the U.S. to have more options in terms of its policy towards Venezuela. Um, this is yet another veiled threat of military intervention, and there have been many such threats. Uh, they are part of a destabilization campaign, just as the economic sanctions are part of a destabilization campaign. They are designed to create anxiety uh, and to create human suffering in the country um, in order to support efforts to dislodge a government from power. Do you think it's going to be a military intervention from the U.S. in Venezuela? I wouldn't discount anything from uh, the Trump administration, and particularly as we know from several testimonies at this point uh, that President Trump himself has eyed Venezuela as a good prospect for uh, military invasion. He's said so many times, and he's also indicated that you know, the U.S. should be motivated to do so given the enormous um, oil reserves that exist in Venezuela. Uh, John Bolton is also the, the national security advisor to Trump, has also uh, spoken about um, how U.S. oil companies should take advantage of uh, the availability of these oil reserves in Venezuela if um, their regime change efforts are successful. Uh, so, I think there is a distinct possibility, uh, but I do think that you have cooler heads within uh, the bureaucracy, including within the Department of Defense, that are aware of how 
complicated a military intervention in Venezuela would be. Um, uh, it would uh, involve uh, a long time commitment um, and there's really no saying what would happen. It would be an unpredictable outcome. Um, you have, of course, a government that still has a strong base uh, within the country and that may well be prepared to resist a military inv invasion. On top of, of course, a conventional army uh, in the country that is very significant indeed and, and well armed. Uh, and so any sort of military intervention would present a lot of risks at a time when the U.S. is trying to scale back uh, its military intervention and occupation in other parts of the world, like in particular Syria. in the Middle East, yes. Did you have the chance to assess if uh, Juan Guaido has any support? Yes, I mean, I believe he does have some support. I believe there is uh, certainly a sector of the population that wants change at all costs, and they see Juan Guaido as a possible agent of change, empowered by the United States. I think you have sectors of the opposition in Venezuela that are even open to a military intervention from the United States without any sort of idea of what that would really uh, represent. But I see more people, certainly among those that I met, and I met with people from the opposition side, um, from the Chavista side, and everything in between. Um, and in general, people were very much against uh, the current policy of the Trump administration towards Venezuela very much against the idea of military intervention, but also very much against the fact that the U.S. is in intervening so aggressively with the sanctions and, you know, basically are the operation that is behind Juan Guaido and allowing him to exist politically in the country. On Tuesday, uh, the foreign minister of Cuba, Bruno Rodriguez, wrote in a Twitter, and I want to try to translate to English, he said, the Secretary of State of the U.S., we're talking about Mike Pompeo, is looking ridiculous because he has said Cuba is a real imperialistic power in Venezuela. And then he tried to say what the U.S. has been doing inside Venezuela. And he said uh, its government, the U.S. government, was stealing from Venezuela during two centuries, he said. Organized the coup in 2002 against Chavez, also, uh, the, the oil attack in 2003 also created the self-proclaimed president, Token Guaido, and now it's celebrating the electrical outage. And the conclusion, he says, don't forget Monroe is not Cuban. True. Uh, well, I think what we're seeing is uh, a real reversion to a Cold War sort of framework. And it's because of the personnel in charge of U.S. foreign policy at the moment. Uh, they see things in very simplistic terms. I think that they sincerely, sincerely believe that Cuba is controlling uh, the Maduro government, that the Maduro government is somehow a puppet. Um, I don't think they have any uh, serious intelligence to back this. Um, I was in Venezuela. I'm very familiar with the government there. There's no sense that the Cubans are controlling anything at all, uh, but they uh, tend to believe their own myths. Um, and this myth is, is really about um, threats to U.S. hegemony. Uh, they want to imagine that there is, uh, you know, some insidious, grand international conspiracy against the U.S. because, of course, this justifies uh, U.S. intervention. And, and, you know, their interest is in seeing the U.S. restore uh, its, its hegemony, its imperial power throughout the region. For many uh, analysts, it's perverse what the U.S. is doing in terms of asphyxiating in financially and economically Venezuela to reach its own resources. We're not talking borrowing money. We're talking about the money that it produced with oil that is in the U.S. sitting frozen, the money of CITCO. Uh, same thing in Europe, uh, even they want to get he, their own gold in England and the, U, the UK government say, we're not giving it back to you. And with that money, they could absolutely perfect run the country in terms of buying the necessary food, the necessary medicines to take care of the 
needs of the population. And now the U.S. that is cutting all that sources is denouncing that the people of Venezuela is uh, having hunger and all sort of uh, lacks of everything, and it's because of the government. Is it perverse that they have created the monster that they are denunciating? Yes. I mean, they're not entirely responsible for the economic situation in Venezuela, but certainly since August of 2017, when uh, the U.S. government began to apply broad economic sanctions, beginning with financial sanctions and now more recently sanctions on the oil industry, uh, they have a great deal of responsibility uh, in terms of the internal situation in Venezuela and the difficulty that people have in accessing medicine, uh, in being able to pay for, um, you know, food, et cetera. Um, those difficulties are um, in part, in great part at this point, attributable to uh, U.S. sanctions. How the media, we're talking about the uh, mass media in the U.S. and international media of countries, friends or partners with the U.S., is portraying the situation in Venezuela. How objective, how fair, how realistic is the way they paint it? Well, um, I, I think we can't talk about the mass media quite as a block. Uh, you do have um, right-wing outlets like Fox News um, and Breitbart and others uh, that um, have uh, the vision, the same vision really of the situation that the Trump administration is trying to project. Uh, in terms of the rest of the media, we see sort of a back and forth. I would say that initially, uh, much of the mainstream media was uh, really towing the line, was really supporting uh, this idea of the legitimacy of Guaido and of, I would say, the legitimacy of the Trump policy towards Venezuela. Um, however, this has been changing, I think, in recent weeks, and in part because, uh, you know, the U.S. has shown uh, the U.S. administration has shown that it doesn't have a plan besides trying to foment a coup d'etat in Venezuela. That's become very apparent. They have no other plan uh, going forward. And I, I think you're seeing more skepticism in the media now. Um, there have been recent reports, for instance, the New York Times uh, recently acknowledged um, that the uh, burnt truck of aid at the uh, Colombian border uh, during this attempt to ship, to deliver aid across the border. Or supposed humanitarian aid. The supposed humanitarian aid, um, that this Price burning was actually Price. caused, um, perhaps Price. accidentally, uh, by the opposition, but at any rate, not by Maduro, as uh, uh, the Trump reported. administration claimed and as some outlets reported. So you are beginning to see a little bit more nuance, uh, and I think it's because there is growing skepticism of the Trump policy towards Venezuela because of the very extreme nature of those that are pushing this policy. What's going on in the Congress here in Washington regarding Venezuela? So it's interesting to see that um, some of the Democratic leadership has, at least until recently, been essentially supporting a lot of the Trump administration's policies towards Venezuela, and in particular, the recognition of Guaido. Um, and they have been pushing back against efforts to, coming from progressive sectors in the United States, uh, to really denounce uh, this destabilization campaign that the U.S. is waging. But we're seeing uh, more progressive sectors uh, that are taking a more anti-interventionist line. Uh, you have members of Congress like Ro Khanna, uh, Ilian Omar, um, Tulsi Gabbard, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, and others, uh, that while they have been critical at times of the Maduro government, um, at the same time they are even more critical of these um, interventionist policies of the Trump administration at this moment, and they see them as very dangerous. Uh, I think in terms of the Democratic leadership, I think their primary motivation, unfortunately, has to do with Florida politics. And they are most interested in doing everything they can to win the state of Florida in the 2020 presidential elections. Obviously, it's a very important swing state. Uh, and they believe that uh, the strategy of 
supporting Guaido and supporting the Trump administration is helpful to those efforts with a certain electorate and certain funders in South Florida. What is your reading about the protests that we have seen this past weekend in Washington about people that are against what is the U.S. policy towards Venezuela? Is there a um, race of awareness in some parts of the U.S. population that this is something that shouldn't be going on? Oh, yes, there is. Um, not in a great <laughs> amount of the U.S. population because most of the citizens of the United States are not very well informed about their government's foreign policy. Uh, but certainly those that are aware see something very dangerous. They see the buildup towards a possible military intervention, um, or you know, simply they see that there is a destabilization campaign that is making things much worse in Venezuela for the people of Venezuela. So regardless of what they think of the government of Venezuela, um, they believe that what the U.S. government is doing at the moment is extremely harmful to the interests of the people of Venezuela. Government of the U.S. has already said through its hawks, uh, after Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua, what to expect in terms of the U.S. quote-unquote intervention in the rest of the continent? Well, I think this reminds us a little bit of what the neoconservatives uh, said in the early 2000s before the invasion of Iraq, where they talked about the axis of evil um, that had to be uh, destroyed uh, and pointed to the governments of Iraq, uh, Iran, and North Korea. So now they're focused more on uh, the Western Hemisphere. And I think that it really is about an even bigger plan, which is to um, remove the left uh, entirely from power uh, throughout the region. I think they are probably very much focused on the upcoming elections in, in Uruguay and in Bolivia um, and are no doubt intervening in some manner because that is ultimately their goal. They believe that any uh, left-leaning independent government um, in the region that doesn't abide by uh, the U.S. agenda um, needs to be, it needs to be exterminated, it needs to be completely eliminated. Um, they don't want to have a single bad example, as they see it, left in the hemisphere. Alex Mayne, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Jorge.